right, good morning. Um, thank you for waking everyone up. <laughs> thank you for being awake. Um, let's talk a bit about Evolving KDE and how we can shape our future. It's been a long time since Matthias Oetrich uh, wrote this email that started KDE. That was in 1969. And 96. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're awake. Very good. <laughs> um, and one of the things he writes is um, Unix popularity grows thanks to the re free variants, mostly Linux, but still a consistent, nice looking free desktop environment is missing. There are several nice, either free or low price applications available so that Linux x11 would most almost fit everybody's needs if we could offer a real GUI. That was almost 20 years ago. I think we can say we have that. <laughs> <laughs> but the world around us is changing. We have mobile phones, we have smart watches, and we have these weird things. And all of us know that this is happening. All of us feel that, yes, technology around us is evolving in many, many different ways. But it seems to me that for a long time we've been kind of not acknowledging it as a community. Individual people, definitely, but as a community, we've been kind of like a deer in a headlight. Um, so as the world around us is changing, so are we. Um, this is a beautiful place, but it's been growing and not taken enough care of. Um, no one took the time to take away a few things, to remove some unnecessary pieces or some unhealthy pieces. And I think we have kind of the same situation in our community. So we need to look at where we actually are and what we want to do to get us ready for the future. And this is where Wellwin KDE comes in. It's basically an effort to try to get us to look at where are we, who are we, where do we want to go, and how do we get us there. We started out with a survey to ask everyone, our contributors, our users, about their opinions, their feelings, and their view on our ecosystem. And what I'm going to talk about um, in the next few minutes is what we took out of those answers that people gave us. So first on the topic of where actually are we? We have a great community. People appreciate that we are friendly, that we are open, that it is very easy to find someone who can help you with a problem. Um, we meet at Academy, we meet here. Uh, there's a lot of very good social interactions. As one of the people who filled out the survey said, there's a sense of working for the greater good that drives the community. It is welcoming and friendly and able to integrate people from very different backgrounds and cultures. For me, it represents the ideal of what a free software community should be. I think that sums it up very nicely. We have great technology. Um, people rave about Greta, for example. We have KDE, KDE Frameworks 5, which is getting used in all kinds of places now, and which really can take our technology to more places than it ever has been before. And we should be proud of that. We are a place where people can have an impact, a real impact on the world, where people can really ha 
make a difference, and it is something they value. <coughs> this is my friend Ashish. This is a T-shirt he always wears when he uh, flies. <laughs> um, we are a place where we really provide users with the tools they need to be free, to keep their freedom in a world where this is more necessary than ever. We are a place where people can scratch their own itch, where they can really solve their own problems. We are a place for learning, where people can grow and learn how to interact in a global diverse community, where people can learn to program, where people can learn to work in really complex systems. And we should be really proud of all the mentoring we do through Google's MF Code, Season of KDE, and all the other unstructured learning and mentoring that we do. And one of the people who filled out the survey said, the right variety of people involved in the past years, it did teach me to see the world in different ways. But there are also downsides. Um, people say they don't find the time and energy to contribute to KDE, which is an indication for me that they don't prioritize it higher than a lot of other things in their life, which might be fair, but um, maybe in some places that priority should be shifted. Um, some people say they have a really hard time to see how they can get started, how their skills can be useful for us. We still seem to fail despite all our efforts to really show people that it's very easy to get into KDE, um, that it's very easy to start with something really small. We spent so much effort on that and still it doesn't seem to stick. Vision, strategy and focus. We don't really have it. And people feel that and people demand it. And one interesting thing someone said was, while we are not always moving in the same direction, we always want to move forward. Which I think sums it up nicely, the current situation. Um, but that brings me to where do we actually want to go? Where do we want to channel all that energy that we have and all the good ideas that we have and all the talent that we have? To figure that out, we definitely need vision, strategy, and focus. Which things should we be concentrating on? What should we be doing? So some of the things people say is, for example, we should be on more devices, we should be in the cloud, we should be um, defending users' freedoms there, we should be giving them a conversion experience. No matter which device they use, they want to have KDE on it and they want it to be a seamless experience. People want us to create truly excellent software that is not just better than any other free software, but that is really, truly excellent and can compete with whatever is out there. And that is hard, but it's doable, as some of us in the community have shown. At the same time, we need to continue to stay friendly and open, and this will be a struggle. People want us to continue to defend freedom, both by providing them with real free alternatives to a lot of the proprietary stuff and that is out there that is infringing on their, on their rights and on their freedom. And at the same time, um, we should be collaborating more with other organizations to advocate for some of the things that are wrong and that hinder our work and that hinder people's freedom. 
which brings me to more concentration on the bigger picture. Over the last years, we have spent so much time on ourselves that we sometimes lost the focus of where we are in a much bigger ecosystem. Um, how, we, how we fit together with other organizations, how, how we see our role in the world. And I, that is something people want to see changed. The good thing is, we're actually partly there already. We have cases where parts of our community really do this. We have Krita, for example, which was named so many times as one of the projects that has a vision, that is truly excellent, that can compete with whatever is out there. We have things like KDE Connect that really brings us this connection between where we were and where the future is. We have KDE Frameworks 5 that really brings us out of the usual suspects that we've been serving so far. So how do we get the rest of us there? There are five things that we need to do. The first of which is we need to find a way for us to define a vision, a strategy, and focus. How we're going to do this is something we need to discuss over the next year, uh, over the next week, over the next month. Once we have that, we actually need to have a really hard look at all the things that we have been doing over the past 19 years and figure out which of those are still useful in the way we have them, which of those need to be tweaked, and which of those maybe we need to stop. How, how are we going to do that um, without a vision, strategy, and focus? So we need that first. Being, having that allows us to say no, and that allows us to say yes to many, many different other things. And this is something we really need. The third thing we need to do is really have a look at our current onboarding processes and how we show people how to get into this community, how to get started. So many different sub-projects have junior jobs, getting started guides, and so on. But we have no clear pipeline for, to get people there. We need to fix that. We need to simplify, make clearer, give them better tools to get started. Our main web presence. We really need a better message and clearer page there. We really need to make it easier for people to understand who we are and to get them to what they really want. Our current web presence isn't serving that. And the fifth point, we need to look at all our outreach venues, social media, the dot, um, planet, and so on, and really find ways to improve them so we reach a wider audience with our message. Now, none of this can be done without a contribution from all of you. So, Please think about what's the one small thing you can do to get us there. What's the next step that you can take to help make that happen? And we have a buff on, um, to, on Monday, tomorrow. And I hope to see many of you there to discuss this. And we have some time here for questions as well now. Are there questions? Frederick will play the runner. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. um, so, questions, please uh, go ahead. Let's sleep again. Now, by the way, I had some very good coffee this morning. Uh, in your, 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 your own mind, 
do you already have some inkling of, of what things we've done in the past we should stop doing? Do you have some sort of mental list of that already? Um. And, and be honest, we won't, we won't be frightened if you are telling us, let's stop doing it for software. <laughs> um. Yes, I have some ideas. Um, and I think we should start by things like, why do we have so many music players? Why do we have several screenshot programs? We should really take a look why and find a good reason, find a good answer to that question. So you, you said that we should say no to more things and we should focus on things and we should have a strategy and so on. Um, so we can decide what we do and what we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm wondering, one of the great things is that many people bring their own passion, many people come with their own ideas and actually there is a pretty welcoming community for all kinds of crazy ideas where people don't have to have to ask for anything, they can just do something. Mm -hmm. And what holds us together is more the, the values um, and, and how we work together as a community. So is, is there really a need to, to say no to many things? I mean, we are not a corporation where you try to implement a very consistent strategy where you only address one market and try to make a lot of money. I and mean, we also want to give room for all the creative people who do crazy stuff. So and I think what would you say about that? <laughs> I raise you, breathe. Um, which I think is very consistent, very nice, is an amazing step forward, and still allows us to have crazy other things. Um, we saying no doesn't necessarily mean it can't be done, but we as a core community need to say, this is what we concentrate on, and this is what we don't concentrate on. Anyone else can do that, that's fine. Um, and they can continue to do that. And maybe that's exactly the way how we get crazy new ideas for the next 20 years. And that's fine, but um, unless we have a clearer story about ourselves, it's very hard for people from the outside to say, okay, this is where I belong. This is where that I, what I can associate with. This is." This is aligned with myself. And I know this isn't going <laughs> to be easy, and I know um, that some, some people will disagree with that. And that's, um, I think, OK, because the place we are in right now is not sustainable. Um, we just had a nice talk this morning about how less and less people in general, in general contribute to free software or to um, volunteer courses. Like, what was it, the firefighters? Um, and concentrate more on, for example, oh, I want to do this great startup. I want to raise a lot of money. Um, and we are seeing this um, in the number of people who, from India, for example, apply for our some of code programs. Instead of saying, I could make a shitload of money if I start a startup. Which is probably not going to happen, but that's something people think. And um, we need to counter that. We need to, to find ways to, to be more attractive again and to find our focus. Um, it's not going to be a question, it's more going to be a comment. Um, every time I say that, people turn around. <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to, to, to mention the um, awesome work that the visual design group and the usability guys made. Because I, I'm still on KD4, uh, I'm really looking forward to Plasma 5 at some point. Um, and every time I see the screenshot, I'm just like drooling all over. Um, and I think the main reason why Plasma 5 still looks so professional and so good, and I mean professional in a good way, not in a boring corporate way, is that it has some consistency. And I really like the idea that, that the, whole, the whole point of uh, 
simple as that holds and it's powerful when needed is a really good mantra that I think at least all of the pro uh, all of the applications that are in in the main repository are should apply to. I mean, obviously, we have like extra gear and playgrounds, etc., where which are exactly there for playing around. And I'm a huge fan of the playground and the extra gears. Um, so, in my view, it would be already very cool if. KD, whatever KD stands for these days, um, would be uh, consistent, at least in the main repository, whatever the main repository means these days. Behind you. Hi. Hi. Um, I think the, uh, you mentioned that, uh, that the evolving KD is a process, and uh, you mentioned some steps in a certain order, um, but I was missing the first step, uh, I should say, uh, the former speaker uh, mentioned it already, what is KDE? So we have to define the we, and KDE is not a technology anymore, and uh, there is a lot of um, looking at KDE still as a technology term, so um, like um, uh, desktop is consistent or how many music players do we need, but um, from my understanding that uh, the KDE EV and the community was always not about technology and staying out and letting the people in the, uh, in the community decide what they want to do. So um, my question is, mm, you, had, you mentioned the survey, we had a survey. Is there any data or um, outcome of the survey? Because I didn't see that. So what is the community saying uh, what they like to, to see? That's basically the, the things I, I mentioned as this is where we are and this is where we want to go. Um, if you want access to the raw data, I can give that to you. Uh, there is a written summary on the KD community list that you can read. Okay, but there's uh, not like um, hard data, like uh, 200 people took the survey and uh, 50... Okay, uh, um, 202 people took the survey. Um, roughly half of those were users and roughly half of those were existing contributors. Um, most of them, or a good part of them came from Europe. Um, the people who contributed contribute for um, five years or more most of the time. Um, yes, that is what I have in mind right now, but um, yeah, there, there's more online. Thanks. Okay. I will be scared to come kill me one day, they are just pulling out the next one. <laughs> just a side note, you, you have nice slides. Perhaps you could just link the communities to the slides and that would answer that question. Mm, yes, my plan is to write this up as a blog post over the next days. And I can also put up my slides, but I don't think they are too useful without um, commentary. Excellent. <laughs> More questions? Um, 
Honestly, I don't think so. Because again, look at uh, Krita, look at Breeze, look at Crazy Film of Five. They were all done to scratch an itch and to, to solve a problem. But at the same time, these teams managed to get a clear goal and to find their path and to really succeed at what they had planned. And we can do that in more places without compromising what, what we have been. We just need to find a way how to do that. And it's possible. We have shown that we can do that. several other projects as well and um, for the ones I am familiar with it's I think one of two cases either it's a big struggle um, just like we have it or it's a very top-down this is what we are and you're either on board or not and I hope we can find a way somewhere in between and we have to figure out how to do that. And, and looking at more other projects, I think, is a very good start. <laughs> we are a friendly community. No fighting here. <laughs> OK, so uh, I just want to follow up what Louise and Angel said uh, and say that I think that having a focus on a vision doesn't go away with having fun. And, and I mean, when you have a focus on a vision, say, we do this, right? That's what most people do, but it doesn't mean you can't do anything else, right? It's like we're not tired of with hitting people if you, you deviate it from, from what the main focus is, right? So it's not that we're going to tell people to stop doing anything else because I don't think yeah. that'll work. And I don't think that how will ask will probably work away. And again, we have done the same thing for the manifesto, and I think it has really benefited us in having a clearer answer to is this us or is this not us? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mine was uh, uh, most of a concern. I, I think it's having a very uh, defined uh, focus and vision for the individual projects, it's uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, I agree that the uh, narrowing of, of focus of data is exactly what it made it awesome. Also, also plasma, you know, more rich design, being quite clear what our uh, application is recommending, and things like that have been awesome. But uh, applying something like that on a KD, on whole KD level, I'm not sure it's a good idea. I wouldn't really want to see um, like a new, even, 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 even a new N plus one uh, uh, music player project that, uh, that uh, hears uh, you are really welcome there because we are already at the menu or 
your it, favorite project has yes. a So it's not about you need to be careful in that. Yeah. So it's not about telling the N plus one music player you can't come here. But it's about saying, okay, you can be the N plus ones, but the first one is the one we focus on. This is where our resources go. This is where we concentrate on. This is what we market. This is what we recommend to our users. And if you're N plus one and you get so much better than the first one, maybe then you should be number one. But yes. Yes. Okay. Um, we, as in the uh, KDE usability team slash the BDG, uh, in several, made several attempts to propose a, or to start a process of finding a vision for all of KDE. And then usually we got a ton of comments like uh, the one Marco just uh, presented. And um, that was such a huge backlash that we, each time we eventually gave up. Um, so, do you have ideas on how to, I mean, I obviously still think it's needed, um, so do you have ideas on how to convince the community that maybe it still is a good idea after all? Um, the survey was the first step to show, okay, so many people believe that this is something we really should be working on. Um, and the other thing is I think we really should look at what, what has failed in the past and why and see how we can do that in a different way. Um, I don't have the answer yet, um, but please come to the buffer and let's talk about it. So it's mostly a comment to the extending of the application and stuff like that. So what I experienced over the last year is that we as the desk project have a hard time because we have such a large application and we get blamed for it. And that is something which over the time really frustrated me and brought me close to burning out over it because it was like, okay, no matter how good a job I do, we get blamed for the other parts. So from my perspective, going down and saying, no, the applications, you're not part of the standard uh, set, or also kicking out application when they uh, do not fit the quality anymore, is something we really need. So I'm sure you all have heard of the whole lean startup thing and all that movement. Uh, that speak is having success for a reason. Usually things stop the bottom does not work. Usually ground plans do not work. Usually visions and having big dreams do not work. You have to be agile, you have to pivot. That's how you have to get feedback and you have to react to it. So having a plan of uniting the entire community under a big vision that we will, that we will follow like an army, that's simply not going to happen. I and mean, we should all forget about it and be more agile. We should try more things and we should be fast changing, pivoting and trying to fix whatever issues we want. And in that regard, I actually believe that regarding to what Thomas said, my advice would be let's just experience and things will happen and things like uh, success like Krita will happen and like Shiko Krita is a good project of journalists and, and it's having great success. And things like that like this are going to happen. So if we are open to change, and we welcome it. At some point, something, a, a vision will happen and most of the community will follow it or not. But this will organically happen. We don't have to mm -hmm. create it artificially because usually when you do that, it's, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I've been on the board for four years now, in KDE almost 10. And what I'm seeing is that people are desperately waiting for this to happen and it doesn't really happen except for the cases we mentioned already. Um, so some help is needed. And unless, so we can decide that we don't want to do that, um, but then it's not going to happen. That's. If that's what we want, that's fine. But from the other comments, I 
sense that that is not the case. Um, yeah. The impression I've had um, in those areas where we have got a um, particular focus, I don't know, computers have been mentioned, and frameworks, um, plasma is another one, where these have seemed, from my point of view, to be one or two people in each case have uh, come up with and uh, driven that vision, at least at the start, and has gathered other people around. Is if we want to create a focus, um, is that, do you think we're going to need people like a sort of core person of people to lead that and get people to uh, follow that? And is that dangerous to um, sort of put so much into leadership positions? Into you know, uh, is there's obviously always a danger of personality clashes and that sort of thing. When you get, when you sort of elevate uh, someone in that way. Yes. Um, yes, I think so. Um, and I don't have the perfect answer to that yet. And I think this is something we should be discussing there. And looking at the time. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> this is the right point. Join the buff. Let's disagree and agree and disagree again. Let's discuss later and in the hallway and in the five minute break that we'll have right now. Thank you.